in this next course i'm going to teach you the 10 most important camera related settings does not matter whether it is a high-end body like canon 1dx mark ii or an entry-level body like the canon 1200d or doesn't matter if it is in a high-end body like the nikon d5 or the entry level like the nikon d3200 what really matters is understanding what are these important 10 key elements key settings in the camera let's look at so here if we come close have a look at the different settings so this is the info screen of uh, the canon the right side here is the canon 1dx mark to this one and then on the left side here we see this is basically the 1200d now let's look at the canon 1dx mark to screen so if you look at the parameters i'm in aperture priority mode and then i half press the shutter disk button i get the shutter speed so here if you see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten these are the ten important settings of a camera which you have to get it right the first time now the exposure triangle parameters if I talk about the exposure triangle parameters, which is nothing but your shutter speed, aperture and ISO. So you need to get these basics right. So be it in aperture priority mode, the AV mode or the A mode, and then the shutter priority mode, the TV or the S mode in Nikon, manual mode, any of these modes. These are the three core parameters based on which you basically expose your particular image. So it is important to get those three parameters right. What is basically shutter speed? duration of time basically the shutter is open so in case of the shutter speed high shutter speed freezes the action and then slow shutter speed creates nice motion blur so that is the work of shutter speed the next parameter is aperture aperture is one of the parameters responsible for depth of field of course there are other two parameters namely the focal length of the lens what you are using and then the camera to subject distance now, focal length of the lens, if you have 400mm, 500mm, 6, 800mm, longer the telephoto what you have, shallow is your depth of field. Wider perspective, 50mm, 18mm, okay, 11mm. So, wider the perspective, then the wider or the longer is your depth of field. So, then comes the second parameter, which is camera to the subject distance. If you are very close to the subject, you have shallow depth of field. If you are very far from the subject, you have a larger depth of field. And then the third parameter, which is your aperture. Smaller the F number, F2.8, F4, F5.6, smaller the F number, shallow is your depth of field. Larger the F number, F16, F22, you go up. Larger the F number, larger is your depth of field. So these three parameters, the first three important camera settings of uh, shutter speed, aperture and ISO. So you arrive at these parameters. And the last one, not to forget, the ISO. ISO is the sensitivity of your sensor. In uh, the camera film days, I would say, we used to shoot with uh, ASA 100, 200 uh, film, where it was more of the sensitivity of the sensor itself. Sorry, the sensitivity of the film. There used to be chemicals in the film and they used to react to light. That is where the sensitivity term comes. In case of digital cameras, what we have is the sensor, how fast the sensor reacts to light. So that is what your ISO sensitivity is. Lower the ISO, Obviously, the image quality may be better. Higher the ISO in low light situation, a lot of noise comes in. So, these three parameters you have to get it right. Now, if you go to the next parameters, which is your aperture priority or manual, any of those. This is the shooting mode, what we call. Okay, so in case of the shooting mode, so if we come close here and if we have a look at this, the third, the fourth parameter, which is basically currently it is AV in uh, Canon AV basically is the aperture priority. So if I just click on the mode button, so we have program mode, AV mode, manual, TV, bulb, other. So this is the screen what you get of the Canon 1DX Mark II. So whereas if you look at an entry level camera, you have a lot of modes over here. So be it Canon, Nikon, it doesn't matter what camera it is. So manual mode, AV, TV, the program mode, auto mode, then the other creative modes, then all the portrait, uh, landscape, macro, sports, night mode, and then it's basically the movie making mode in this entry level. Okay. So here if you see, this is what you have to decide. That's the fourth parameter you have to decide whether you want to shoot in aperture priority or any of the modes. What does aperture priority do? Aperture priority is the mode where you set the aperture and you set the ISO. 
So for these two parameters, camera will decide a shutter speed. That is what aperture priority does. So in my case, which is wildlife photography, bird photography, majority of the times I use aperture priority and then I can also control the shutter speed. Of course, I do have a separate uh, session, a uh, video tutorial just on that as to how you can control your shutter speed even in aperture priority. And then the other mode is the TV mode or the S mode for shutter priority mode. There what happens, you set an ISO and then you set what kind of shutter speed you want. Now, depending on the lighting availability, the camera will give a corresponding aperture. Now, a lot of times what happens, especially in low light situation, you try to keep a very high shutter speed, the camera's aperture will not be able to support a proper exposure. And that is where you may see the aperture number blinking. So, you need to watch out for that particular situation. And then the other one is the M, the manual mode. In manual mode, you arrive at all the three parameters, right from aperture, shutter speed to ISO. Everything you have to arrive at your own. And what are the other modes now? As I said, in the uh, entry-level cameras, you have the sports mode, the portrait mode, different modes of the camera. So each of them are meant for a specific purpose as to depending on the situation, if you're doing sports and you don't have much idea about the exposure triangle parameters, when to set what kind of numbers, really very very beginner you just bought your camera no issues start with those creative modes you said uh, whether you want to do landscape or portrait or macro you set it into that mode and start shooting practice practice and then start learning so that is basically about the shooting mode now let us see which is the next mode what we have next is basically if you come and watch here so the next first second third fourth the fifth parameter is the exposure compensation what you see over here Okay, so here if you see, it is the exposure compensation. Now, what does exposure compensation do? So, irrespective of whether you are in TV mode, AV mode, any of those modes, of course, not the manual mode. So, let's consider the AV and the TV mode. So, in this particular situation, aperture, the exposure compensation, what it does, you go on to the right side. So, if you see, if you look at the exposure compensation, so on the right side, we have plus one, plus two, plus three. So, those... So those are basically the stop values. So plus one, plus two, plus three. So when you move the exposure compensation more to the right like this, so you are letting in more light. So obviously if you look at the shutter speed, what is happening? So from a low shutter speed or from, if you see zero exposure compensation, one by 400. So I overexpose it. You see the shutter speed keeps dropping. There you go. Look at the shutter speed. That means more light is coming in. Whereas on the other side, I keep moving under exposure shutter speed is increasing so the exposure compensation what it does you go on to the plus side more light comes in whereas you go on to the left side less light comes in so overexposure under exposure so this is what the exposure compensation does now what are the other ones so let's quickly go through the other ones next comes basically the picture style so if you look at this over here, the next one is picture style. So if I go into that, easy, there you go. If I go into that, you have uh, starting with auto mode, standard, portrait, landscape, fine detail, neutral. I mean, there are a lot of these different settings. Let me come back to the standard. Now. When it comes to the picture style, it is nothing but, as you saw, given a situation internally, the camera adjusts its contrast, vibrance, saturation, uh, so some of those details, the brightness, it adjusts that color tone also, white balance also up to some extent, the color tone rather, and then tries to give you a particular setting. Now, this particular parameter about the picture style, uh, I would say like it's not applicable to raw mode. If you're shooting only in JPEG mode, then yes, this is important to remember to make sure you put, to, you put the correct setting. So that is about the picture style. Let's look at the other one. The next one. So even if I uh, show you the entry level one, as you see so far what we have covered. So, so far what we have covered, it's the same one. So in the entry level camera, if you see there is the white balance. So next is white balance. So if you look at this one, both of them, if you look at it together. Okay, you come back. Okay. So this K it shows here. So if I press the quick access button, go into that, 
This is basically the white balance color temperature. You see the difference. Most of it is the same except for the high-end bodies where you have the manual white balance setting. Whereas the other ones, if you see here in the entry-level bodies, these are the presets which even shows what is the equivalent Kelvin value. Now that, there you go, okay. So now that one is basically the white balance. White balance is one of the parameters which is responsible for getting you nice colors in your image. So go ahead, set the particular white balance what you want. So typically for outdoors, now that the sun is going down, you want to get beautiful uh, golden light, yellowish uh, tones if you want, increase your white balance. So in cameras which doesn't have manual white balance, in those cameras, go ahead and set it to cloudy or even the shade is what I would recommend to get nice warmer tones. Of course, if you're shooting raw, you can adjust this in post-processing. Whereas uh, in my camera, since I have the manual white balance, I go ahead and set that particular parameter, especially with the numbering. Okay, let's see the remaining ones. What are the available ones? So that is white balance. Now let's look at quickly the last three parameters, which is the servo mode, metering, and then the shutter release, how we want the speed to be. Now, if I go into the quick access again, so if you see the high-end bodies have one shot and air servo, the Nikon equivalent is basically autofocus single, autofocus continuous. Whereas in the entry level body, if you see here, I have three modes. One shot, that is uh, autofocus single, AI focus, which is autofocus auto, and AI servo, which is your autofocus continuous. Now, what are these? Where you need to use what? The one shot mode or the autofocus single is suitable for totally static subjects. So if the subject, say, is not moving, just stationary at one place, use one shot. If the subject is moving, so my next target here is the sun is setting and beautiful birds against the, against the setting sun, they're going to fly. Anything which is moving in flight, that I use it as AI servo or autofocus continuous. The third one is AI focus or autofocus auto. So there what happens if the subject is static stationary, internally the camera switches to one shot. Whereas You never resist a photographer, no matter what work, what he's doing. You see some beautiful birds flying against the sun. You, you tend to start shooting and that is how you need to work. Okay, coming back, where were we? Air servo. So, depends. So, the third one, the AI focus or basically the autofocus auto. If the subject is stationary, internally it switches to one shot. Or if the subject starts to move, then it switches over to the servo. Uh, rather, avoid that particular setting. So, either go with the one shot or go with your basically the air servo or autofocus continuous. Next comes the most important part which is basically metering. Now when it comes to metering, be it uh, entry level cameras or the high end cameras, if you again see, I go into the quick access. If you see I have the evaluative metering, partial metering, spot and then the center weighted average. Whereas even in uh, entry level cameras, so I go into the quick access go inside i just have evaluative metering partial metering and center weighted average there is no spot metering in the canon entry level camera and uh, so far wow, beautiful so far whatever i explained holds good be it canon nikon any of those of course me being a canon shooter so i'm just using the canon camera as an example but the concept holds good for canon nikon sony any camera for that matter so when it comes to the whole concept of metering, that is the core fundamental concept where it depends on how much light is getting reflected from the subject. So what spot meter does is it calculates the amount of light coming out from that particular point. Whereas uh, the whole concept of matrix metering or evaluative takes the average of the entire scene. Partial metering and spot metering takes a value of around 2 to 3% from the center focusing point. Whereas partial metering takes around 13 to 15 percent of the center area. Center weighted average, as the name says, gives more emphasis to the center portion of the image. Now, of course, uh, which setting to use when is currently beyond the scope of this particular course. I will definitely do a separate one for that. But uh, my recommendation is to go with evaluative metering and then go ahead and shoot. And then comes the last tenth important parameter, which is basically, if I just go into that, Okay, so different dry mode. 
So in case of different drive mode, if you come and have a look at this, which is again the same with respect to Canon, Nikon, any of those things. Uh, the entry level, if you see, it has single shot, continuous shooting and then the various timer mode what we have. Whereas if you move to the high end uh, uh, Canon body, I go in, okay, it has the same single shooting, high speed continuous high and then low continuous, then the single shot. So if you see there are then the timer mode, there are different modes. Uh, of course, uh, depending on your genre of photography, let me go back. So depending on your genre of photography and mine being wildlife, birds, uh, action photography, I always keep it in high speed continuous. And if you're more of a landscape photographer, macro or uh, still photography, that kind of thing, use the single shot. There is no need to shoot a landscape in high speed continuous, not required. Okay. So if you see, these are the 10 most important, or I would say, I would not say most, but the 10 really important uh, settings which you have to remember. So put, go through each of the settings get to the bottom basic fundamentals on how to use them what effect what impact they have on the image and then you will be all set so go ahead explore them canon nikon sony doesn't matter get these concepts right get these 10 parameters right and you will be able to make some awesome images good luck